Joining me live is Israeli government spokesperson Ilan Levy. Uh, a very good morning, our time. Uh, how does your government respond to this? South Africa brought an action against Israel, trying to get it to suspend immediately the military campaign to bring down Hamas and release the hostages. And the International Court of Justice very wisely threw that out. And in so doing, reaffirmed our natural and inherent right to protect and defend our people in the wake of the October 7 massacre and bring back the hostages. I think a lot of people looking on are wondering, when is it going to end? This war will end when we have achieved our goals, the destruction of Hamas and the release of the hostages. We wish that we had a magic wand that we could wave and the hostages would come home and Hamas would stop being a genocidal terror organization committed to our destruction. But the first thing Hamas did after slaughtering 1,200 people and abducting 253 was to tell us that it wants to do it again and again. So we're fighting Hamas so that it can't do it again and again, and we're fighting to release the hostages we fear are being tortured and executed and raped in its tunnels right now, and there is no way we're going to abandon them, and so we will continue to fight. Not because we want to, but because we must, and because we have no choice. Hamas declared war on us, it started this war, and we're going to end this war. And we're going to end this war in a way that makes sure that it can never hurt us again. What about the innocent people caught in between? It's heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking to think everyone who has been killed since October 7th would still be alive if Hamas had not declared this needless war and chosen to fight it from inside civilian areas, deliberately hiding underneath homes and schools and hospitals in a tunnel network 1.5 times longer than the London Underground in order to try to maximize civilian casualties. For us, every civilian casualty is a tragedy. For Hamas, it is a strategy. And we think it's important, therefore, that the Australian government, for example, has said Hamas must lay down its arms. There can be no room for Hamas in a post-war Gaza. And anyone who's seriously concerned for innocent civilians, as we are, should be demanding one simple thing. Hamas should surrender. It should release the hostages, lay down its arms, hand over its war criminals. But the way to try to minimize humanitarian suffering is not to tell Israel to abandon hostages in the hands of terrorists who might be raping them and to leave Hamas free to do that again, as South Africa outrageously tried to get the court to do today. Well, they're your words. Of course, you're an Israeli government spokesperson. I, I wonder what it looks like, and many people do, what does a post-war Gaza look like, particularly for the Palestinian people? We hope that a post-Hamas Gaza will give opportunities for Palestinians who understand that terrorism is a dead end, that there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You know, it's really amazing to look at how much concrete and how much international aid Hamas squandered. It took money it received from foreign governments and built a whole maze of tunnels underneath Gaza instead of building a prosperous city above ground. It took incredible talent, incredible skill and a lot of money. And we hope that the day after this war, Gaza will be rebuilt in a sustainable way that makes sure the concrete goes to people's houses and that terrorists aren't able to subordinate the whole area again for the sake of their genocidal agenda. And we're also talking about the need for de-radicalization. We can't have another generation of Palestinian children being brought up in Hamas's child soldier boot camps being raised on a diet of jihad and martyrdom and being taught these awful values of war against the people of Israel. We need the world to tell the Palestinians some tough truths, that the state of Israel is here to stay, that it has a right to exist in strong, sovereign, defensible borders, and that their best hope of a prosperous future is alongside the state of Israel, instead of violently trying to destroy it like they did with the invasion and massacre of October 7th. Thanks for joining us on the show. My pleasure. Thank you.